Hi. Um, I'm very happy to be here because I can see so many familiar faces and friends. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you for bringing me here to uh, share my experience. Um, so I'm, I am Maria, I'm a former UCY student and I am currently co-founder of Solisteps. Um, in the next 15 minutes I'm going to talk about opportunities, fail, uh, wait, opportunities, fears and uh, le lessons learned. But first let's start with a goal. I will complete my studies, get a job and settle down. Who has this dream? Or who had this goal? I, I had this goal. Come on, guys. Come on, yeah? Okay, much better. Better, well. I had this goal until the third year of my bachelor's. Um, it goes, I had this master plan. I'm going to complete my bachelor's in four years. I will go to UK because the master's is just a year, so I'm going to finish earlier. And I will come back and get a job, and that's it. Done. Then I have my life to, to live and enjoy. And the plan didn't go exactly as planned. <laughs> um, so the epiphany came in the third year when I realized that I want to do, I want to participate with Erasmus in uh, in another university. I wanted to go to Barcelona, and then also that year I wanted to do a summer internship in another country. Um, so both these opportunities were the first steps that took me outside my comfort zone. Was I ready to take this opportunity? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> uh, my English was quite basic. Um, I was entering my last year in bachelor's, which was a terrible time for me to go anywhere. And I was lacking skills. I was not ready to go for an internship. I didn't, have the, I didn't feel that I, I had the, the skills that I needed to succeed uh, in the internship. I was lacking confidence. And all these fears were excuses and these are the excuses that we bring, among many others, to don't for not taking some opportunities. But thankfully, I ignored them and I applied. Oops. I applied to these to those opportunities and I went to, to other countries and I spent some time there. And this, these fears didn't um, affect me while I was doing my while I was studying there. It didn't affect me while I was working in the internship. They were just excuses. They were in the back of my mind. And what I learned is that excuses that will, be, that will be always there and we need to ignore them. We need to just shut them down and get the opportunities. Get as many opportunities as you can. So after those two opportunities, I found out about Erasmus Mundus. This is a different type of master's degree. Uh, and as, a, as an Erasmus Mundus student, I studied in two universities in two different countries. I paid zero for my tuition fee while I was living in other countries, which was awesome. And uh, it gave me the opportunity to work in a big company to do my master's thesis. And after finishing that, another door opened to work in another big company, Novartis, where I met Andreas. So what you can see here, you can see opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. And the thing is, one opportunity brings another. And all together, create this sequence of opportunities, which is it's a sequence of your life, and you should make sure that you're creating an exciting life sequence because it's your life. Do something exciting. And of course, I had all this what if. Um, what if I'm, I'm not good enough? What if I would never finish my master's? What if I get fired in my first job? Oh my god, I was literally freaking out. But I applied anyway, and I got in, not because I was the best. I had average grades. I paid in three courses at, <laughs> at UCY, uh, and I'm very proud of it because I learned so much more after failing uh, those courses. So um, I acknowledge my fears and I just live with them, but I don't let them win. I, I apply and I get opportunities as much as I can, and I just leave the, the fears there. I ignore them. So. When I was in Switzerland at Novartis, uh, I met Andreas. Andreas is so much into startups and entrepreneurship, and we applied to Startup Weekend competition. Uh, so, for the ones who don't know, Startup Weekend is a three days competition. Uh, you go, you, for, you team up with other people, and you have three days to come up with an idea, try to validate it, and build a prototype. 
validating an idea means go out and talk with people who have this problem that you thought that you want to solve. So you try to see if there is space for you to, to actually solve that problem. And those three days were the best three days, the best weekend of my life. Like I felt, I was so excited. Every day I was, before I sleep, not that I slept a lot those three days, but every night I was blogging about it because I wanted to transfer my excitement to others. I wanted others to participate to a startup weekend uh, when they have the chance. Um, I think you're gonna get the slides if you ask for them. Uh, feel free to, to see the blog post. Um, so at that, at that point, after the startup weekend, I realized that Novartis, yes, it's, it's a huge organization. I was learning a lot, but I wanted to have a different kind of impact on problems that I care about, I personally care about. Um, and that is why, and yeah, I wanted to work in, in the startup weekend, but as a full-time job. I wanted to do that every day. And that's when <laughs> I discovered EF. EF is a startup accelerator. Um, accelerator is a program that helps teams build their startups and they, they help them accelerate their procedure to build their company. EF though is a bit different. Uh, it's the, the only accelerator that instead of taking teams, it takes individuals. For me it was perfect because I didn't have any friends who were interested in startups and I really wanted to do something. So I applied by myself. And I, and I found 50 other people inside this program that they did, they did the same thing. And so, I quit my job. <laughs> and it was scary. <laughs> people couldn't understand why I did it. My friends called me crazy. My dad was not happy at all. Uh, it was a nightmare, but still, I did it. And I left Switzerland and I went to London. Um, it was the best decision I have ever taken. Okay, this is a slight reminder for me to remember what to say. Uh, so why did I tell you all this story right now? I'm just telling you, selfishly talking about myself. It's because a lot of you are students and you can think, you can find similarities to what you're doing what, with what I did and what I am doing. So I was a student with very, very small ambitions. I had that plan that, yeah, that I showed you before and I had very, yeah, small, small ambitions, big insecurities, no confidence, but the only good thing that I was doing, I couldn't let the opportunities go. So that was one good thing. Uh, when, I was, uh, when I saw opportunity, I was trying to get it. Even if I was not ready, even if I was not the, pers the best person. The good thing about these opportunities, you don't judge if you're gonna get in. And people, the others judge for you if you're gonna get in, so if they think you're good, then you get in. It's, so it's simple as that. <laughs> so try think uh, for your case in which in, in which um, stop you are in your path. Uh, are you a student? Have you taken any opportunities? Try to find what you can do next. Try to create your sequence. Um, so let's go back now to EF. I got into EF, and the first thing I learned is failure. And what I learned is that there is no such, a, such thing as failure. There are choices and there are decisions. How is it possible? I know that in Cyprus, um, because we are such a small community, society, when somebody fails, everybody gets to know about it. And everybody judges that person, he failed. It's like the worst thing that can happen to you to try something and fail. I know that's my personal experience and I, I'm sure that many of you know the same thing. But is it, is it really a failure if you prove that an idea is not going to work? Is it a failure if you kill an idea? No. I did that three times. I killed three ideas. Is it a failure if you work alone because you couldn't find your right co-founder? Of course not. You took a hard decision to continue alone until you find somebody. Is it a failure if you lose your co-founder? It's, it's actually maybe a good thing, because if he left, you're succeeding in learning something. So, and this was the first thing that Andreas told me in Switzerland, who has it as, a, as his personal mindset and motto, and that's what I'm trying to adopt as well, and it's, it's so good to think like that. It's amazing. 
So next, the next thing I've learned uh, at EF is that for building a, a startup, you need an idea and a co-founder. That sounds pretty easy, but it's actually, <laughs> it's quite hard. So when I say idea, I mean, you need to find an idea that you really, really care about in a problem that affects you or in a sector that you know the most. It has to be coming from around you. It cannot be something, I don't know, in the stars or whatever. Are you crazy about shopping, for, about food, about sports, about, I don't know, economics or Greek or whatever? Find whatever makes you happy, whatever keeps your mind busy and try to innovate in that area. And then the second part, co-founder. Oh God, it is so hard. You need to think which people around you can become, can become the people that you will see most, the most in your life. You're gonna see this person more than your uh, other half, more than your family. You need to feel comfortable with this person to disagree every single time. It's gonna happen. Uh, because building a startup, it's all about taking decisions and you're gonna argue, and you need to communicate. So communication is the, the fundamental thing between two co-founders. So try to think um, people around you that you work with, work, that you work well with, and try to test this relationship, co-founding relationship, and see how it goes. So let's say we have an idea, we have a co-founder. Next step is to test out the idea. I have first the test out and not the build, because Usually we rush to build something before we even ask for the idea to see if it's actually something that people want. Uh, so go and ask people, do they, do they want this? And then build something very quickly, something very small, and go and test it again and ask them again. Is this something that you were expecting for? And then it iterate and change it until you make it exactly like uh, people want it. So test early, test often. And after going all those, through all those failures and uh, trying different stuff, um, four months ago, I teamed up with my co-founder and we started building Solid Steps. Solid Steps is the only automatic solution for, for SMEs, small and medium business, businesses in the UK, to select, set up, and manage their pension schemes. The reason we went into this sector is that there was a huge need, there is a new legislation in the UK that obliges all the employers to set up a pension scheme by the end of 2017. So why now it was very clear? And why us? It's because my co-founder is coming from an economics background and I'm coming from the, from the tech. And we could see how our skills could blend together and build this platform. We are only two and we're doing everything. So it's like building the product and find, trying to find customers, make all those cold, cold calls with people who speak English as their first language, and I'm like, I'm speaking English with my Greek, Spanish accent, and I'm like, yes, would you like to buy my product? And they're like, mm, no. It's like you need to learn how to make these questions, you need to learn how to, um, how to talk to investors, how to try to fundraise. There are so many things that we didn't know, we didn't learn at university, because during your degree, you're focusing on becoming an expert in one field. But when you're going to, into startups, you need to learn so many other soft skills that you're going to need to make your company work. But you don't need to know these skills. You don't need to get them before you start a startup. You're learning by doing, and it's the best way to learn. Because, yeah, you don't spend any time beforehand. Usually, whatever we learn, it's like theory until you face it somewhere in real life. So here, we don't learn anything. We start doing, and then we have a problem and then we need to solve it, so we learn that moment and we solve it. So it's actually more direct way of learning. So that was my goal. Uh, now it's totally <laughs> deleted, and I hope that you will replace this with your personal goals and make it not be the end, but to be continued and try to find what inspires you and what makes you happy to do. It's never too late to seek for opportunities. Uh, opportunities are everywhere and it, it's never late. It doesn't matter how old you are. It, it really doesn't matter if you have a job. Uh, jobs are, okay, in, in, in Cyprus jobs are not everywhere, but in the world jobs are everywhere and there are a lot of opportunities. So try to do things now that you can. So, baby steps. 
first step is tomorrow. Tomorrow, that's the inside conference. Uh, we said the Yakos also uh, mentioned it before. Um, we have some very limited discounted tickets. Students, university students who are interested, please, please come and talk to me afterwards. We have a very good offers for you guys and it will be an amazing experience for you. This is the biggest conference that happened that ever happened in Cyprus. It's gonna be two days. Speakers are coming from all over the world. Not they are not only Cypriots and Greeks, they are coming from UK, uh, USA, Israel. It's really um, an amazing place to be in this weekend. Uh, I, I can't recommend it highly enough. Like seriously. It's just a weekend. It's okay if you don't sleep enough this weekend. <laughs> um, so opportunities are endless. This is a very short list that I put up, I put up last night. Um, if you have any questions about any of them, just ask me. Uh, I'm gonna be here for an hour. Um, and it's up to you to apply. So you can go home and keep thinking if you want to do something, or you can actually apply. And, and actually for everything that I've done, I didn't think about it, I just applied and I thought, okay, they're not gonna get me, so I, I will apply and forget about it. And then I was getting the call and the email, hey, you're in, and I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> I didn't even have to expect it. So just apply, guys. Thank you very much.